Shalom, Lekram. Welcome to the channel, Code Searcher. Um, I need to do a video here, and I need to address this to uh, Brother Derek Gilbert, Rick Shaw, and Rabbi Glazerson. Um, I, I was sent this video by many of my subscribers um, about this video, some things that were said in here. Um, and so I need to set the record straight. Um, and so let me just be really clear to hear. I don't mean just any disrespect to Derek Gilbert at Skywatch TV News. And I really hope he doesn't flag me for going play by play in this video um, because I'm not gonna monetize this. I will not make a dime on this video, but it needs to be said. Things need to be set straight here. And this is why, brother. Um, I know these two gentlemen, Rick Shaw and Rabbi Gladerson. Um, I've met Rick on two different occasions in uh, Pikes Peak and at um, Orlando. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Brother Gilbert, you were there as well. Uh, you may remember what I looked like then. I look a lot different now. And here I am. You can see at the Orlando Prophecy Summit 2014. And this is me with uh, L.A. Marzulli. And on that day, I shared some information with L.A. Marzulli. I, I sat down with him for about an hour. And I showed him some things, and he said, you need to show this to Rick Shaw. And so I did. And I walked up to Rick Shaw with hard copy. Hear me, brother. With hard copy in hand. And Rick Shaw, if you think back, and you remember this young man here. Now, I know I look different in these months. But, brother, if you have seen what I've seen and gone what I've gone through the past several months, you'd look the same. I'm not, I'm not the same person as I was then. But I showed you some things in the codes. Amazing things. And the first thing you said to me was, what books are these in? And when I told you the Nagaim, the prophets, it went right over your head and, and you totally blew me off. You totally uh, didn't, didn't want to hear what I had to say. Even when, when I was sitting in your presentation and people were recognizing who I was and they were coming to me after your presentation and asking my opinion about stuff, even then, still, uh, you, you didn't want to hear what I had to say about codes because I looked in codes past the first five books. Now, we need to set something straight here. Why that is? Because... The word says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeshua said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And the whole world, word, excuse me, testifies unto me. Well, that being said, um, I watched this video, folks, and uh, it disturbed me. Um, and I've got to confess, I was a little heartbroken a little bit by the, what, a comment the rabbi makes uh, where he basically denies me. Uh, because I am friends with him on Facebook, I'm subscribed to him on YouTube, and I do send um, emails and things to him, uh, is a Nicodemus relationship of sorts. He will not acknowledge me uh, publicly. Uh, and I'm probably one of the crazies that he mentions in there. Um, but I would challenge you, Brother Gilbert or Rick Shaw, to ask him, who is the rabbi that was banned from the Talmud? And what are they calling? They call him crazy. And you know why that is? It's because it came to the revelation of who Yeshua was. Ask him about that. Anytime someone has a revelation about Yeshua, you see, brother, because I'm an idol worshiper to Orthodox Jews, assimilated Jew, because I, I, my family intermarried. But I believe in Yeshua. And the Ruach HaKodesh has shown me some mighty and powerful things. Now, why is that significant? And I'll tell you, Yeshua said, I thank you, Father, that you've hid these things from the prudent, from the wise, but you reveal these to babes. I have about a fifth grade reading level in Hebrew, and I don't speak Hebrew fluently, but yet, he consistently shows me things hidden. And in Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, if you call on 
me, I will show you great and mighty things that are hidden. I've done that. So I've had my uh, upon the mountain moment with the Creator. <clears throat> so I'm very confident in what I'm saying here. And I want to tell you what the Holy Spirit told me in a dream. And this is for R Brother Rick and uh, Rabbi Bladerson. And I'm taking this very seriously with all respect. I respect these men tremendously. And the Holy Spirit said, Lama tish to me mu azot. Why do you marvel at these men and these things? And at the time I seen these rabbis, Yuval Varye, Rabbi Bladerson and some others. And he said, why do you marvel at these? And I was perplexed. I didn't know what this means. You know, because a few weeks ago, I did a video, and probably a month ago, and I want to show you a pattern here. And I was astounded. I, I, all of a sudden, I seen the Orthodox Jews talking about Planet 7X and Nibiru. All of a sudden, this has not only been, and he says somewhere in here, and uh, we, we'll cover that, he said somewhere he'd been, he found this about six years, and that's not true. Rabbi Gladysson was asked about Nibiru and Comet Elenin exactly four years ago, and I know for sure because I sent him the email. He made a video about it, looking for the, the star Nibiru and Elenin, but he stayed silent all these years until about two months ago. And I'm going to show you a pattern that we were seeing Nibiru in the codes, based on something someone asked, I was looking at uh, Siding Spring. What you're looking at here, brother, is a code table in the Navayim. This is not uh, directly connected to a Torah, but is definitely um, a, a code in the prophets. And it happens to be 100% accurate. And this was confirmed here this past week. I have almost 10,000 subscribers, and I can promise you about 1,000 of them can confirm right now what I'm about to tell you. One year before Siding Spring had a close encounter with Mars, who had revealed collides in the table. Now, I had told people, based on what I see here from uh, Isaiah 24, that this was going to be a deep impact. You see the word comet right on top of the actual name of Comet Saturday Spring with the word Meshephet, judgment. Isaiah 24. But also in here, brother, and we were talking about this one year before Comet Saturday Spring, and now here we are 18 more months after Saturday Spring, and the word Nibiru is in here with collides. So, here's my point. Um, and Folks that are subscribed to my channel, you can confirm this. I was really excited that the Holy Spirit was revealing these things to uh, these rabbis. And what I was told this morning, before I was even informed of the video on Skywatch, um, that I was not to marvel anymore at, at these rabbis and what's, what is being confirmed. Because it's not confirmations. There's being gleaning going on. And that needs to be said. And I'm okay with that as long as we tell the whole story, the whole picture, okay? Because Rick Shaw, when I was at the conference, I showed you in hard copy these very same things. Uh, Obama in Gog and Magog, you ask the question, who was it that come up with that found Gog and Magog? Dorm Whitsum. And you could see in the video here, I'm going to show you, where the rabbi is a little uneasy and he doesn't want to say, but he knows. And rabbi, you know, you know. Because we sent you the emails when we found it. You're looking at the one who found, oh, actually one half. The other researcher is Chris Ray. Chris Ray was the one who, who said, have you seen this? And I actually have seen it, but I didn't put the connection to Gog and Magog. But if you go and you watch, Yuval Olivier uh, Avadia, in his videos, uh, like this one here, he talks about Planet 7X, the Kachav, the star. And when was this? February 8th. Okay, so 
Um, the Orthodox Jews were not talking about this for six years. So Rick Shaw is incorrect uh, when this is stated. Uh, they've only been talking about it for two months, and it was because they were gleaning it from this channel. And I say that with respect, because the rabbi knows it's true. This is what I'm going to show you. This is one of the rabbi's channels here, M. Glazerson, four years ago. This is the, t the table I was telling you about, Ellen and Nibiru 5772. Uh, that's four years ago. You will not see any more videos or any more mention of Nibiru until, and this is on another channel that's all Hebrews, Matayahu Glazerson is the name in Hebrew. And then if you go over here, and I got it pulled up with just Nibiru, these are the, the videos. Literally three hours ago, he has posted a video uh, fr probably from um, the Pinlight production there. I see it's annotated. Uh, but you could look uh, the, the, the number of videos <clears throat> going back, and it's a lot. It's probably 20 or so. And I was pretty astounded that this. Um, the, the rabbi is searching the mirror and finding it. So, uh, you know, I'm saying to myself, thank you, Abba, for confirming. But then the Holy Spirit the ruler Hakodesh tells me this morning it was gleaning that um, which I knew the, before you know I, he knows about my videos he knows about my tables the reason why he will not acknowledge me publicly folks is because what's on my channel is because what I reveal in the whole of the text not just some of all of it I can show you the resurrection of Yeshua in Genesis when it says in Matthew 24, uh, you know, clear layout of the end times when Yeshua says, abomination of desolation, signs of thy coming, time of trouble, all these terms that have been found in the Navayim. The rabbi is, is, is correct when he says the first, to, for, first five books is the blueprint of creation, but the rest of the book is a testimony to the divine hand that he has spoken through his Ruach to his people. The reason why they, divide, they deny the rest of the book is because what you can find in books like Isaiah 53, one chapter, Yeshua is my name. Yeshua is my name. Isaiah 53. Confront him with this. I'm not here to, for acknowledgement or affirmation or anything like this. But when I see a video where two brothers are clearly a part of the body and, and there's denial of Yeshua and exaltation of Kabbalah and mysticism it gets under my skin. I know the motivation. I know the motivation because the man has been shown met the truth. And yet, uh, not one phone call to Code Searcher has a, maybe a balance to codes because obviously, Robert Glazerson and Code Searcher are the two leading on YouTube. There are no others. You find no others. But the truth is being suppressed here. You know, that you, you, you know who Yeshua is. You know who the Messiah is. But you're patronizing the man sitting next to him According to scriptures, coptically, talking about the lawless one and the light that comes, uh, and, he, and he doesn't know what you're talking about. Share the gospel with him. That is what I've been trying to do with my channel. You can see the videos that I have here. Many of them talking about uh, Nibiru. Uh, going back for months. G going, go back to you know 2014 when we were talking about Saudi Spring. And by the way, Saudi Spring, the table that appears in, in mostly the prophets, has been proven 100% accurate so far. And this is not about pre making predictions, because I believe that this Bible code is not a crystal ball, but it's an ephod that the creator of the universe will give you information through. He is the only one that can reveal. You cannot search out the future 
Only the one who knows the future from the beginning and from the end can give you that. Michael Drawson was not given a predictive code as an atheist, but who had used him and what he tried to do, discrediting the codes to put the codes on the mainstream. I've been doing this about 15 years or so, and I'm passionate about it because I've been to the mountain, and he's shown me secret and deep things. There are tables, several, that myself and the rabbis were working on simultaneously. Here's an example of that. Elijah and a Messiah only appears in the, the code one time. Now this table was found within 24 hours of uh, Ben Ezra, who posted his. Uh, very similar. The reason being is because Mashiach and Elijah only appears one time in the code, so it's an obvious find for those who are tenacious researchers. The fact that I found it the same night, an Orthodox Jew is looking at the same thing was a confirmation to me. Uh, the Shemitah 5775. Another one that I found. Glazerson posts a video on this, but he only finds it in the Torah. He didn't wrap the rest of the scripture on there where it has impending judgment to the world in that table. Or a gnus. That's the word he told me for you, Rick. You hide your light under a bushel. Brother, be a light in the darkness. Let your light shine. Again, this is not uh, because of, of ego. This is because there is a divine hand from beginning to end. He said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the Aleph and the Tav. It is the same creator for the whole book. You know this, Rick. Proclaim this to this brother from Judah. You're doing him a disservice. So let me let me play a little bit of this. Looking into him, and I think they're really intriguing. So now he's brought all these tables that, first of all, I want to preface all, all of this to say that we're not making predictions. We don't right. know why this is happening. We don't know, as I've said many times, these numbers keep coming up. And now we're finding the skips, uh, the ELS, the equidistant letter sequencing, the skips. And let me just say this. That information on uh, gematria and the skips and the patterns of, of tables, that first inf that information was released by Chris Ray almost two years ago. He would found that anomaly. So let me just straighten the record out on that. Between each letter have a skip of 5,776 characters. When we look up the words that we want to know what's mm -hmm. going to happen this year, I mean, I have no explanation for it. So it kind of makes the hair stand up on your arms a little bit. And we should point out that 5,776, the Jewish year, is the year in which we are right now. 16. Yes. yes. Well, Rabbi Glazerson, uh, Richard shared some of the tables that you had sent to him, and it appears as though they're pointing to something happening very, very soon, like within the next seven days. Is that, am I reading this correctly? I'm pulling time, yeah. And what he goes into about here, let me fast forward just a little bit, because we, you know, compressing this for time. But I took some notes on some different points on here. He talks about Purim and the month of Purim uh, coming up and uh, what's going on there. But but folks, um, it is clear uh, the information uh, was gleaned from myself and from um, Gil Broussard. I want to take you to uh, just look back at the Vanya's video from February. And I want to show you something. <laughs> Then we'll go back. See, showing obviously what is warm, what I believe warm. Same thing that the Christians are seeing. Now, by the way, I'm not one that subscribes in the telephone pictures of this in the Western sky. I believe this is being veiled by the chemtrails. When it happens, when when it is seen, the scriptures will be fulfilled that man's heart will fail them 
for those things coming upon the earth. This is not Nibiru you yet, but the point is, uh, where is he getting this information from? <laughs> This is a picture, and in, in a few minutes, in seconds, you'll see you, uh, Yuval standing in front of this is a, is a chart from Gil Broussard. So he has gotten this information from Gil, one, but the codes from yours truly. This is Yuval. Here. Clearly talking about Planet 7X, and this is back in, in February and, and, and a month before that. But before this, Yuval was only talking about Gog and Magog, the other find that we had found. Uh, you ask him, and we'll see here in the video, uh, about uh, Gog and Magog at 14 minutes. But, but uh, let's just continue a little bit. The 50s. So it almost fits with the 26th of March. They speak about Nibelo because I think for a long time already they point out to this day, 26th of March, which is exactly after the day of Purim, which itself is interesting. Well, we, we've been hearing prophecies, or well, I should say predictions about Nibiru, Planet X. Uh, for for uh, quite some time, it was a surprise to me to see that that word Nibiru was showing up. And it has been. Let me just say, um, the word Nibiru has been around mostly because of a man named Zachariah Stitchin. Now, I never did subscribe to the theory of Nibiru. I believe in Revelation chapter 8 when it talks about wormwood. But when I'm looking for wormwood and I'm finding Nibiru connected to it, and then I see the science behind this seventh planet. It doesn't matter what Zachariah Stitchin calls it or if the, the stories behind his theory is true. He coined the name and Yahuwah knew it before and has it in the coast. That's the important thing. But uh, here again, he's talking about they've known this for a while and I just showed you that is not true. He has only known this for f past four years, but only the past two months has he been searching it seriously. In the Torah codes. I think 50 years ago it started. I you see. Six years ago, and I have to correct him, with respect, Rabbi, it was four years ago. It was the time that it started about Nibiru, 50 years ago. Yes, that is a long time. And actually, uh, we, we have tables on, on Planet X from going back several years when we first started talking about this. I didn't know if the name Nibiru would come up in the Torah codes or not. But it's... And I don't quite understand that. He says, we've had uh, tables going back several years. Uh, again now we see it's come up multiple times and next to other uh, dates and events within close proximity of them which is kind of hard to explain mm. uh, like the, the particular table I have up right now says Nibiru the star 5776 Mashiach Purim which is Messiah at Purim and the skip of that axis keyword phrase, Mashiach Purim, is 5,776 characters. Another clue pointing at the current year. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, and we just said, Chris pointed out to me the, the different tables that we had. For instance, 2014, 2015, and we had blood moons at that skip. So uh, we were talking about the gematria or the skip patterns being years for a couple of years now. Yes, but it's important to point out that in Judaism, to get Messiah, Messiah is not enough the date. Jews have to, I mean, to behave properly, you know, which is called repentance, you know, to repent, which keeping to, you know, keeping to properly, you know, not to transgress it. So therefore, sometimes you see dates of Messiah, and unfortunately, Messiah is not there. And what he's saying here, folks, and I know some of you cannot understand what he's saying. I mean, so what he's been showing is Mashiach, and dates for several years now. Here's the explanation. Shuva. They've been doing repentance and there's conditions. It's always conditional with Rabbi Glazerson about this appearance of the Mashiach. As a body believer, you know we're looking for the second coming of Yeshua. Okay, they missed their first visit, visitation. If you don't know this, go and read the book of uh, uh, Romans. It's a good place to start. The veil was put on their eyes for your benefit. So that the, the Goyim, the Gentiles could be grafted in. Why? 
I showed you the reason for that. And in Genesis 49, Jacob blesses Manasseh and Ephraim, and he says to Ephraim, you, and I'm saying this in, in English, you will be the fullness of the Gentiles. You know what that means, Christian. You will be the fullness of the Gentiles. So Ephraim will be the fullness. Hear me. Ephraim will be the fullness of the Gentiles. I've shown you that. Folks, um, I love these guys, but the record has to be set straight because there's a candle being held under a bushel. Ora gnus. Ora gnus. And I have a word for you two brothers that the Holy Spirit gave me. When I conclude this, I'm going to give it to you. And I pray that you listen, that you hear me. It means that the Jews, unfortunately, are not ready for it yet. I see, I see. So we, the, the people have to be properly prepared for Messiah to, to appear. Sure, yeah, but it means that they, it's once this is a date for Messiah, it means it is more appropriate than others. You see, this was... I want to, I want to go on to, uh, and, and I would encourage you to go to watch this video um, to 11 minutes and 45 seconds because he talks about the search for Nibiru and then going into Gog and Magog. The two issues I have, um, I have dozens of tables that I've seen that myself and the rabbi have talked about. Quotes, Torah quotes, it's like the Torah, we believe the Torah, five books of Moses were the blueprint of creation. Mm -hmm. Only the five books. That when God uh, planned to create a world, he was looking into the Torah, uh, and in fact, he made like, you know, like the pilots today before flying, they prepare, you know, all the way. The flight plan. Uh, the destination, the same thing God did. It means he took the Torah, right? And in the Torah, he put all these plans, you know. It means what we see in the codes is exactly what was planned. You understand? So if we see the... Just like I found in the comment table about colliding with Mars, had the word collides twice, in the codes one year before it happened and i showed that i showed a plasma discharge 24 hours before it happened in the prophets who still speaks through his prophets today that in five seven seven six so and so will beat me that part of the plan of creation was this this will happen so, so, it's very, very important to know what codes are. So it's I, not like a game, you know. It is sure, really, sure. It, it can get really complicated, but essentially what we're finding here and what we talked about on the show when I was able to come see you was that we're finding interwoven codes at the same time, like Torah codes as one part of... An, something that was encoded and then gematria that's encoded and then even the skips in the torah codes themselves could be a form of gematria itself mm -hmm. so it's like almost like 3d encoding of, of a text that's you know three hundred eight thousand letters long you know it's it's just it's it's amazing At 14 How would you minutes do that? folks uh, uh, well and i not, appreciate your patience by any natural yeah. means that's I want to take you to 14 minutes Professor because Rose, this is... you found codes in other books. And the answer that I got from, from most of them is that, well, we found isolated words in other books, but we don't find what we find in the Torah. The Torah is... Okay, so he was he's just talking about, are there other codes in other books? And uh, what he's doing here is he's giving himself an exception to the rule on this one code. Where it came from, by the way, myself and Chris Ray completely unique where you've got words that are like touching and you have best pairs of words together that mean something uh i mean that's unusual i mean we did listen find, to what he said uh, was it uh who found obama in ezekiel 38 was that it was uh, give credit to the yeah, correct person i don't, I don't know even who, who found it it was on door uh, he says who was it that found it i i, I don't know who it was that found it Shaw says, was it Dorm Whitsum? No, 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 no. But he didn't find no, it. No, no, no. Not, you know, somebody uh, found it out. But it's interesting to uh, Somebody found it. You're looking at one half of the research team that found that, as well as we found Obama in many other places. And by the way, he quotes a scripture here in just a minute, uh, actually at uh, 10 minutes and 34, 
34 seconds. Second Thessalonians 2, 8 about the lawless one. If you want to know who the lawless one is, folk, go look at um, some of my videos. We uh, pretty much shown you who that is in the past several years that we've been on YouTube here. Uh, so here we go. Point out that even though the main idea of quotes is in the Torah, but you can find sometimes isolated words in the Bible. And he says, but sometimes you can find isolated words. Uh, and that is the reason why, and I'm telling you this with love, brothers, Father, clear their eyes so that they can see this clearly. Because the Orthodox Jews cannot confront Isaiah 53, they cannot confront Psalm 22, they cannot confront Zechariah 12 and 13 and 14, and the one who is pierced, and the one who will step down on Mount of the Olives and split it in two. They can't confront that because Yeshua is that Mashiach that we've been looking for, that they've been looking for, that we know. Hear me, brothers. This is not about pride. This is about standing up for what is right when the light of Yeshua is being held under a bushel. i got to say something. i got to say something. It's not about pride. It's about Him. Uh, so, folks, I would encourage you to go watch the video. Please, message uh, Derek Gilbert. Uh, inform him about this uh, video. Please encourage him to go and look at some of the videos. Please encourage Rick Shaw to go and confront some of these codes that we are finding in here who clearly shows who the Yeshua is, the Messiah, and he is coming soon. And it is not the end of darkness. The, the Navayim said it is a darkness coming called the day of Yahuwah. It is a day of gloominess and clouds and of lightnings and of blood moons and eclipses. It gets darker before it gets lighter, brother. It's going to get bad. So, uh, there you go, folks. The, I had to get that out. The, the Holy Spirit just put that on me. And before I go, I need to give you what the Holy Spirit gave me, brother. And I'm going to give you this in Hebrew, Rabbi Gladyson. Mi Allah shamamim be yared. Mi asaf ruach. Ben Khofnav, Mit the Ah Mayin Basamla, Mi Hekin Ko Af Si Ares, Masamo Um Shim Bino Kadida. And I just read you folks, uh, chapter 30, verse 4 from Proverbs, and this is what it says Who has ascended into heaven or descended? And who has gathered the wind in his fist? And who has bound the waters in his garment? And who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If you know. And with that, I want to leave you. Shalom. And may Yeshua bless you. And may he remove the veil from the people's eyes in Yeshua's name. Amen.